What is up, wrestling fans? Richard Woodrow here. Welcome back to episode number six of Pro Wrestling Slam for September the 30th, 2020 for ProWrestlingSlam.net, putting the pro back in pro wrestling. <clears throat> On today's episode, uh, I'm going to stroll down memory lane here, and most wrestling fans around my age or a little, little younger are definitely going to know what I'm talking about because on today's episode, I'm going to go back in time to the mid-1980s to the glory era of professional wrestling, more specifically in the WWE, and I'm going to talk about a cartoon uh, called Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. Now, this was an absolutely phenomenal and fun cartoon um, that, like I said, most wrestling fans will remember. And uh, for those of you who are under a certain age, say under the age of 30 or 25, or <clears throat> I'll give you a rundown of the cartoon, and then I'll give you my thoughts on you know what I thought of the cartoon overall. So, Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling. <clears throat> the show originally aired on CBS from September the 14th, 1985 to October 18th, 1986. So that's two seasons. Reruns aired until June 27th, 1987. It was created by DIC Animation City. Each season had 13 episodes. <clears throat> so basically, the long and short of it is, is that the cartoon featured Hulk Hogan and his group of good guys, or you know, faces as they say in the business, such as Tito Santana, Andre the Giant, Captain Lou Albano, Wendy Richter, Junkyard Dog, Jimmy Superfly Snuka, and Hillbilly Jim, and every you know, on every episode they would fight Rowdy Roddy Piper and his group of bad guys or heels, uh, such as Bobby the Brain Heenan, the Iron Sheik, Nikolai Volkov, the Fabulous Mula, Mr. Fuji, and Big John Studd. And basically, like I said, you know, every episode they'd have simplistic and wacky situations in the classic, you know, good versus evil dynamic. You know, that was pretty typical of the children's cartoons of the 1980s. <clears throat> mean Gene Okerlund would appear as himself in four episodes. Lou Albano and Hulk Hogan appeared for two episodes each. And Nikolai Volkov, Andre the Giant, Roddy Piper, Bobby Heaton, the Fabulous Mula, Tino Santana, and Jimmy Hart, they all appeared on one episode. <clears throat> the iconic opening theme was composed by Jim Steinman. So, like I said, those of you who are familiar with Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling could rem remember that iconic opening theme. And most wrestling fans may not know this, but Hulk Hogan used this entrance theme by Jim Steinman uh, for a while, early on in his career in the WWF. Uh, and then that theme was replaced by what most wrestling fans would know as Hulk Hogan's entrance theme, Real American, which was composed by Rick Derringer. Uh, some no notable voice cameos from the show <clears throat> include actors Brad Garrett, who was the voice of Hulk Hogan. He appeared on episodes of Seinfeld and the hit sit sitcom that most people know, Everybody Loves Raymond. And James Avery, who voiced Junkyard Dog, who voiced Shredder in the hit 80s cartoon Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And for most, you know, most people in the 90s, James Avery played the hilarious Uncle Phil in the uh, hit 90s sitcom Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So, a couple of examples of, you know, the premises of some of these episodes. You know, some of these would include, you know, after a break-in in the junkyard... JYD, Junkyard Dog, gets a dog for, you know, protection. Uh, mean Gene Okerlund charters a private plane for the wrestlers, and a crash lands in the jungle, so though wackiness will ensue there. Uh, Hulk and his friends decide to clean Mean Gene's new house for him. Andre tries to impress his visiting mother by pretending that he's a chef instead of a wrestler. So, these are, you know, the like I said, the basic premises of these episodes. And, uh, you know, it was good, classic, you know, wholesome, funny you know, 1980s cartoon, you know, and this, you know, this cartoon was, you know, discovered by me when I was six or seven years old, and this was, like I said, at the height of the rock and wrestling uh, phenomenon in the WWF, and, you know, essentially this show is what made me become a pro wrestling fan, and more specifically a WWF fan, so, you know, in a way, I owe a lot to this cartoon because, you know, seeing this cartoon and seeing the opening theme by Jim Steinman, you know, the opening theme shows like Hulk Hogan, you know, he's walking down the street, you know, I'm pretty sure it's in New York and, you know, hundreds of kids swarm him, you know, when I was six or seven years old, Hulk Hogan was like, you know, he was larger than life, you know, he was blonde and tanned and muscular and he had this, you know, deep gravelly voice and, you know, 
And that's when I started getting into pro wrestling. You know, started watching Hulk Hogan's matches, started getting into the WWF. And, uh, you know, a lot of wrestling fans may not think about it in this aspect, but Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling, you know, even though it was a children's cartoon and only lasted two seasons, it was a really important part of the rock and wrestling connection in the WWF because most wrestling fans, when they think of think of that era in the WWF, you know, with Hulk Hogan, with, you know, music stars like Cyndi Lauper and Alice Cooper, you know, the very first WrestleMania when Vince McMahon decided to meld pro wrestling and pop culture together, you know, to create the rock and wrestling connection, Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling, you know, was an, I think it was an integral part of that era. And, you know, when I think, you know, me personally, when I think of the rock and wrestling connection of the WWF in the 1980s, I automatically think of Hulk Hogan's rock and wrestling. So, like I said, this is a fun show, and I'm really, really surprised that the WWE Network hasn't, you know, hasn't added it to its library as of yet. You know, I'm really, really surprised. I mean, the WWE Network's been around for years now, six or seven years now, started in 2013, 2014. And I just really, really hope that WWE Network will add Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling very soon because when it does, I'm there. I'm going to binge watch all two seasons. And uh, I remember when I was a kid, you know, when lunch boxes were a thing, you know, the plastic, you know, hard plastic lunch boxes that had your, you know, various cartoons like Masters of the Universe, Transformers, and there was a Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling lunchbox. And I really, really wanted this lunchbox when I was a kid. Bugged my parents for the longest time, but they never got it for me. You know, I had to sell it for a cheap, you know, cheaper plastic lunchbox. I can't even remember what was, what was on the front of it, but, you know, those. Another, another awesome collectible that I'd like to have that I may add to, like, my small pro wrestling collection. So, like I said, if you haven't seen any episodes of Hulk Hogan's Rock and Wrestling, I highly recommend it. It's a fun cartoon. And, uh, you know, if you're a diehard pro wrestling fan, if you're a fan of the old school WWE slash WWF, uh, you know, I think you'll enjoy this cartoon. So you, you should be able to find episodes on YouTube, Daily Motion, basically anywhere on the Internet, you know, except the w WWE Network. But like I said, hopefully that'll be cleared up, you know, ASAP. So, well, that's going to do it uh, for episode number six of Pro Wrestling Slam. I hope everyone that listens to this episode, I hope you enjoy it and I hope it takes you back to the, the golden era, as I like to call it, of the WWF. And uh, so check out the official website of Pro Wrestling Slam. That's ProWrestlingSlam.net. We always have the latest news in professional wrestling. We got a slew of uh, print interviews, as I, like to, as I like to call them. Our latest interview was with former TNA Knockouts champion Taylor Wilde. We got a ton of interviews. We got a ton of audio interviews with, you know, such big stars as Jim Cornette, Conan, Scotty Riggs, etc. And... Um, you can check us out on our official YouTube channel. Just go to the YouTube search bar and type up Pro Wrestling Slam exclamation point and the channel should come up. You can follow us on Twitter if you're a big, uh, you know, big proponent of Twitter at PW underscore slam. You can follow our official Facebook page at facebook.com slash pro wrestling slam. So until uh, next time, wrestling fans, I hope uh, the rest of you have a great day and I will be back next week with episode number seven. Have a great day, guys.